Hi guys, uh, today we're going to have a look at our um, incubator with the uh, automatic egg turner. And if you look here, um, this is the incubator itself. It's approximately two and a half feet long by about 18 inches by 18 inches. Um, first thing you'll notice here, we've got a nice big pane for viewing in the, at the side show you there so we can see right in the side here and we've got a pane in the top so you can see right in the top the other thing is these are double glazed panes so you can see there's glass on the outside but there's also glass on the inside that will keep the insulation a lot better now unlike a lot of other insulation uh, other incubators this incubator is uh, controlled by the new inky kit uh, DC 10 um, this is a sorry DC12, the new Inky kit, and uh, what this does it allows you. We've only just switched it on now. Look at it, you can see the temperature is climbing now 74.7, 74.8. Uh, 74 this is a great little kit because it's adjustable. It has um, forced air. Um, we've cut a hole out here, and then this unit is mounted to a, a plastic piece of uh, perspex which is mounted on the inside, which we'll show you in a moment. But the reason this is such a good little bit of kit is because uh, you don't need light bulbs, things like that, and it's adjustable so it can be used for uh, chicken eggs and reptile eggs. Uh, obviously for reptile eggs you wouldn't need the automatic turner, um, but today we're going to be using this for um, our chicken eggs. Um, if I open it up now, underneath you'll see There's a little fan here, which is spinning around at the moment. It's on a little circuit board. And underneath, you've got four heat capacitors, and uh, that's what provides the heat. This unit is capable of heating all of this up to 99.5, and in fact, it's that good at uh, maintaining that heat. Over a 24-hour period, it only drops to 99.4, and the maximum temperature was 99.6, so it kept it within 0.2 of a degree uh, over a 24 hour period so that's superb for for incubating the next step we have is the automatic egg turner we have a tray here um, which we uh, have half inch slats half inch wide slats here and uh, they have a quarter of an inch gap so it's ideal uh, for you know chicks to walk around on without them putting their legs through this creates um, about a two inch gap underneath that we can put trays of water and what we're going to do when we get a tray that's actually big enough to fit because we've got two compartments one here and one here um, we're going to run a little uh, airline tube into the tray from outside that we connect up a, that we can connect up a, a fairy liquid bottle or something to to top up from outside so we'll never have to open this incubator once the eggs are set Here's the mechanism here for um, that uh, will move the eggs, and uh, it's controlled on a little cam. I'll show you that in a moment, and a little one RPM motor. Um, if you can get a half RPM motor, that's great. But this one RPM motor only cost us, um, I think it was three pound twenty-five with postage, so it was ideal. Like the half an RPM motor, which would be better for you. Um, and I'll explain the reasons why in a moment um, it was costing around £60 um, but if you were able to get one second hand or something like that that would be perfect we built a little mounting plate here Okay, the cables go through and come out the back here and on, on here we have uh, again a piece of ply for strength and we've just covered it over just to hide any screw heads things like that basically the, pro uh, the process on here is we have a little cam here and the incubator turns on this particular one turns on for 30 seconds which moves the tray right away across and then moves the tray back and we'll show you that working now in a moment in fact what I will do I'll get a couple of eggs and put them in and I'll show you if we just take three eggs just for the sake of it we have varying size uh, 
trays now if you look at this one here it's a little tight for that egg just to touch a bottom so we can put that one up here because this one's slightly wider and then it can move around this whole uh, capacity here will hold 35 eggs it'll actually hold 40 but because of the um because of the bar that we've put here it would mean putting eggs under this uh, would be a little bit tight but it would they would go under there um we've got a four inch uh, travel distance here which will exactly turn the egg over um uh, exactly you know what i'll do i'll get a pen and um i'll mark oh, i need a felt pen and i'll mark the eggs with a dot so you can see them working um and then when uh and then when we uh, switch it on you'll see I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about the rest first um, before we do that I'm going to just lift the f this box out of the way okay even though with the fan and everything's still working on it quite a bit of electrics here and I'll, I'll give you the reasons for each of them this is the 12 volt controller for the um, the heat seek fan and everything else that that's being run here and this has a little uh, temperature probe where we can set anyway within the incubator. The next thing we have is the control circuit for um, for the motor there. Now because originally we wanted a half RPM motor, but like I already explained it was expensive. So what we did, we went for the one RPM motor. The problem we had with this was the smallest little timer plug that you can buy, the little digital timer plugs that, that you can buy. Um, the smallest uh, notation we could use on that was one minute which meant the eggs would travel and travel back to their original position which was no good to us so what we've done we had a little circuit built here you can see it flashing away there's a little circuit here um, and basically it steps uh, 12 volts uh, up to uh, 220 volts um, but this controls um, our egg timer now it will run f through this, it will run for 30 seconds, which will allow that egg tray to travel right across here and turn the eggs halfway, and then it will switch off, and then in an hour's time it will do the same thing again. For ease of this, I'm just going to unplug this here, um, and I'm going to plug it in over here to show you the eggs turning without the... Okay. Now, if you notice now, you can see that little cam moving there, okay, and the eggs are starting to roll, and they roll quite gently, oh this has got a W on this egg, which we've already used before, but I've put a dot on there as well, but as you can see now, the egg tray moves across, and fills this gap, that cam now is, you can see how the cam is worked, there's a little bolt that comes down through this, this arm, and, uh, and it just works on a little cam there. So now them eggs are exactly halfway over, and they're rolling back now. As you can see, this one didn't roll perfect, but um, that was because it. Uh, but you, if we look at this one, you'll see what I'm getting at. It shows you. There you go. That spot. Oh, there's two spots that did roll perfect. I do apologise. There's two spots on this egg, so we've obviously uh, used this before. But as you can see, it's now more or less right back to the wall and all three spots are back on top so this will do repeat this I'm going to um, I'm going to find another two eggs that don't have another spot on them because that's a, a bit off putting I think I've got a spot on that one and a spot on this one so um, we'll put this in now once they get to the end and uh, you'll see what we're getting at So now as this cam rotates, and as you can hear, there's no noise from it, you've got a little noise of the fan, okay, and as the cam rotates, it's rotating the eggs very, very gently, and you'll see the spots all come back up to the surface. So, you know, it's a very good way of turning the eggs without any issues. Again, you've got a little side view here if you want to see them through the side, and you can see um, this sort of tray moving here. But um, it gives this gives you some sort of idea of the depth that you have underneath 
this um, bottom tray for the fluids and things like that. And what we will do is we'll um, fill up one to sort of get the temperature up to around about um, uh, sorry, the humidity up to 30 or 40 degrees or something like that for most of the hatching and then um, when we need to we'll raise it up to 60 degrees um, for for the final few days. The uh, one thing, I'm going to switch this off now, I need to explain to you how, if I can pull that out. We um, obviously only incubate eggs 21 days and on day 18 we on day 18 we then um, want to remove this tray for them to hatch because they don't want to be turned any further after day 18. What we would do in this case, we would wait for this tray to be right at this end. We would then do this screw here, so there's a little bolt underneath and we just put a screwdriver on top. In fact, if I can find one, which I don't think I can, no I haven't got one in here, but maybe we'll do another video if you need to see it. We just undo this screw here. And what that allows us to do is just to tilt this whole process straight out, leaving the eggs. So you can see, you know, it, it just lifts up, leaving the eggs in, in, on the surface there. Um, the whole process is, is, is just automatic. So the only time this thing could be, it'll be open within the 21 days then will be while you take this tray out on day 18, um, which obviously minimizes the uh, temperature issue. And with such a good controller, that is keeping the eggs to within 0.2 of a degree um, over 24 hour period um, it's superb what happens with it, I don't know if I can show you from here um, if I put this back on here obviously it's going to be a little cold at the moment Okay. if you look at this now uh, I think you can just about see it here it's now telling you temperature is 71 degrees Okay, and power, this is HTR, this is the power, is at 100%. The reason for that is it needs to get this unit up to temperature now. As the unit starts reaching temperature, this power output will reduce down to maybe 70%, then 50%, then 12%. So basically, all it does then is ticks over. It's got a constant supply of fresh air being moved around the VIV. Uh, around the incubator and we can put in extra air holes although I haven't bothered for the simple reason being is where we've got cables and things like that that entrains fresh air anyway um, and it, it it doesn't you know it doesn't seem to cause it any issues it works really well um, so basically guys that's that's the incubator like I said if you can get a half um, if you can get a half uh, sorry half revolution and per minute uh, motor um, you would be better off because it would save you having to, to get a circuit like this um, and um, and then you could just plug it into one of those normal timers that you can plug into the wall for lights and things and you can set it to come on for one minute and off the only downfall with that is you can only turn the eggs if you, you know sort of like some of them have got 10 programs others have got 14 others got 17 um, I think that the best one I found which was about 12 pounds um, has got 20 but that's more than enough for the eggs. You, know, you only really want to be taking them four or five times a day. But as it happens here, we are trying to sort of mimic um, what would happen in in sort of reality with with hens moving about and stuff. So um, we're moving them once an hour here, um, and it will just uh, work. Um, we are going to be setting some eggs in this now over the next few days. Um, some lavender. Um, Akara eggs and things like that, so and a couple of uh, exchequer egg horns. Um, so we're going to put them in here, and um, once they're in, uh, we'll show you uh, another video. But it'll just be through this view here, just so you can see the eggs moving about and things like that. But with that timing switch, like I said, it moves one layer. Obviously, where we've had it plugged in, it's moving back and forth. But it'll move one one full movement, switch off for an hour, and then an hour's time will move back. Over there, so it's only moving the eggs halfway per hour. Anyway, hope you like the video. If you've got any questions, give us a shout, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Thanks.